By building appreciative knowledge through these relationships, the relationships then also become an asset for this work to um, call people into the room who might not be able to be in that space for various reasons. Developing an appreciative knowledge of other um, religious uh, religions or faith traditions, I think is challenging because of how one, our education system is structured, and two, the nature of public discourse. In our education system, there are, or at least I was afforded many opportunities to learn about different religions. Um, in, in, um, in high school, I took a world religions course. In college, I took a world religions course. And both touched on many of the basic tenets, fundamental tenets of the major world religions. Oftentimes, especially in a public high school, it's limited to the curriculum that's, that's going to be assessed, right? And it's really easy to assess uh, what's the name for God in Islam. Um, you know, that can show up on a multiple choice test, but developing appreciative knowledge is not something that's easily assessed in uh, public schools. When I first started in the interfaith movement, it was mostly about the dialogue. It was speaking with people from other religious or ethical traditions about what they believed, why they believed it. And that helped me to see, and it sounds simplistic to say it, but what I wasn't or what I didn't believe. I soon came to find though, through dialogue and service projects too, that it was just as important to figure out what we had the same. And those uh, collections of things that people believed helped me understand more about my own faith tradition, flesh it out a bit. It was easier for me to know uh, through what others believed how I should answer specific questions, maybe about big issues like love or the environment or anything like that. It sharpened and refined my understanding of my own faith. And that hasn't stopped. The relationships that I maintain through the interfaith movement of people from all kinds of wild backgrounds have helped me understand myself more deeply and others more deeply as well, which is a very rewarding experience. I began to get more of an appreciative knowledge of other traditions starting when I was a little kid. Um, my family is Indian and we're also Muslim, so we kind of have different traditions that are kind of present in our re regular life. And growing up, a lot of our close friends were Hindus. So we'd go to some of their events or go to some of their religious ceremonies and I would always wonder why they were practicing certain things. And I really kind of was interested in learning more about the history behind these traditions and how that related to my identity, both as an American and as an Indian and growing up in America as a Muslim. I noticed that um, our school had a um, South Asian club that was really big on campus. We put on this big show every year with singing and dancing. And um, both the Muslim and the Hindu students were really involved with this. But they didn't really interact in terms of their religious identity much. Like the Hindu and Muslim students associations didn't really run events together. And I, I knew that a lot of my friends wanted to kind of learn about each other's traditions, but they didn't know the right environment to do that. So by working with the Muslim students, the Hindu students, and the Interfaith Council, we put together an event called Shanti and Salam, which means peace in, in Sanskrit and Arabic, uh, to kind of help us learn about each other's traditions. And it was kind of a closed environment where we had people all like in a safe space where we could discuss uh, Islam and Hinduism and kind of learn from each other. And this event went off really well because this had never really been done before at our school. And it became such an important event that people really took a lot from that it's been running every year since I left. And now it's like almost a staple of the programming between those two groups. I think interfaith has helped me become a better communicator because first of all, I have to know what I believe and I have to know how to explain it in a way that other people will understand and won't misunderstand or put their own spin on it, which you can't always avoid, but by learning how to communicate my own ideas, I'm much better at being able to convey them in a way that others will understand. And as a result, it also gives me the empathy to say, okay, if I were sitting in someone else's shoes, and they were trying to convey to me what they would, what they believe. How would I feel about it? How would I, how would I want someone to treat me? And so I think it's helped me become a better communicator because it's opened me up to different ideas. It's opened me up. It's opened me up to a different world of experiences, and and it's helped me see that we put all these labels on people, and that we don't have to do that. And I am inspired by that. And so it changes the way that I then enact in my own life, um, social justice and humanitarian service 
and nonprofit work because there are others who don't have the same beliefs who are doing as much, if not more. And that really influences me for the better. I think my, the advice that I would give people is to, to take risks and to not let you know, assumptions or um, stereotypes get in the way of getting to know people and, and working with people. And I know that there are certain uh, cultural communities and faith communities that have, that it may seem like they have a lot of baggage or that they're difficult to work with. Um, and, you know, and, it, and it's hard sometimes to get past that pain or get past that struggle. But I think that, you know, persistence is, is important and empathy is important. I cultivated an appreciative knowledge of other traditions solely based on how I was brought up. Um, a lot of my weekends were spent with families from other faith traditions, and particularly ones, for example, that were Muslim. Um, I had a lot of families who were Ismaili Muslim, so that's a part of uh, the, the Shia denomination. And they basically taught me how to pray uh, Salah or Namaz, as we would call it in Urdu. Um, we would have these giant feasts with them and see how, culturally speaking, we were very, very close. And sharing the, sharing the culture and more importantly, sharing the food is how we built actually on the shared values of how the faith traditions could be completely different, but we had a common ground. When I was just out of college, in my first year of rabbinical school, I helped found the Journal of Interreligious Dialogue, which is now the Journal of Interreligious Studies. It came forth as an idea between myself and another seminary student, Stephanie Varnon Hughes, who was at Union Theological Seminary. And we realized that even though we were young, and even though we were still very much in the process of our own religious and spiritual and ethical formations, we needed knowledge of other traditions, and we needed deeper knowledge of how our traditions interacted with others. We got to ask deep questions. So in some ways, thinking of the expression in Hebrew, livnot to lahibanot, we built, and in the process, we were built in our knowledge of other traditions. Learning about other religions is definitely helpful in the medical field because as kind of part of life, you're gonna be taking care of people that are from various different traditions. And a lot of times when people are sick or in kind of serious trouble, they turn to their religious community or their own faith to help them, help them get through that. And having some kind of basic understanding of where they're coming from will really help you build a connection with that patient. And I've noticed this in Chicago. A lot of the communities that we serve at the University of Chicago don't really trust the healthcare system much, but they definitely trust their, their local religious communities. And it's important for the hospital and the medical world to have partnerships with these community organizations to kind of improve the health of their communities too. The ways that we celebrated the Seder, what we emphasized, the Haggadah that we read, um, they were all very specific to our family. And so I had a, a one idea of what a Seder looked like. It wasn't until I actually got to college that, um, college and then graduate school, that I actually learned that there are many other ways of celebrating the Passover Seder. And the different ways of celebrating the Seder came from inviting other um, you know, Jews outside of the humanist Jewish tradition to celebrate the Passover Seder with me, going to Seders hosted by other friends, and then also bringing in um, uh, not just um, Christian neighbors, which was primarily how, who we celebrated the, the Seder with when I was a child, but also um, my Muslim friends, friends who didn't come from any religious tradition at all. Um, and hearing from their, I, their, their perspective what it meant to celebrate the Seder. I remember I was, my brother was hosting a Seder um, just a few years ago and we had all of his friends around the table. And um, one of his friends who was an African-American woman who grew up in the South of the United States talked about what the story of Exodus meant to her as a Christian um, from the, historical, the historic black church, what that story meant, how that inspired her community, how that was a fraught story and, and, and how um, she and her community uh, at least in her church, told that story differently than we were telling the story as sort of Jews in the United States. And that helped me grow in my own understanding of my tradition. Why it was, it allowed me to be self-reflective. Why was I telling the story of Exodus in the way that I was? What were my commitments to, to my tradition, to social justice, to um, engaging the religious other, to protecting the, you know, the oppressed? 
And how is that similar or different to how other people told the story? How are these different details, right? The, the details, the, 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 the uh, sort of um, specific color that people give to the story from their own religious tradition, how did that enrich what I was understanding? And so that was an important experience to me.